The Russian economy has taken investors on a roller coaster ride over the last year, with the ruble in the Moscow stock market rocketing up in recent weeks. Russia seems on the verge of a rebound. But does endemic corruption in the country and having a leader who likes to take big geopolitical risks make Russia too risky an investment now and for the foreseeable future? Joining me to discuss is Robert Jansen, Chief Investment Officer at Westcourt Capital. Robert, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Let's go to that question, because it's one that really interests me. I mean, this is a guy that annexed another country. Right. I mean, there, there seems to be like this X factor around Putin. And from an, an investment perspective, I mean, how do you mitigate against that type of risk? Well, I like to say it's, it's interesting because uh, the, the similarities start and stop. Much like Canada, uh, Russia is an oil-based economy, an oil-based country, um, and that's where things stop. I mean, we have, we have very little geopolitical risk here in Canada, and there's a tremendous amount of geopolitical risk in, in Russia. Um, I think obviously what we saw, what, we, what he did in Crimea in 2014 sort of scared the world stage. He was mm -hmm. suspended by the G8. Uh, put in the penalty box a little bit, and, and now sentiment is starting to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, things are changing. You saw depreciation in the ruble for the better part of 18 months uh, that just turned uh, in January, and so things, you know, grassroots are, are starting to uh, uh, starting to, to take hold, and there are, there are green shoots now, for sure. Yeah, and that fall, let's remember, it was precipitous. The ruble down almost two-thirds against the U.S. dollar from mm -hmm. high to low over 18 months. The Russian stock market decimated. Uh, a nice bounce up now, and I guess I, I wonder how investors look at a country like this. I mean, it's an emerging market, yes, but do you, is there an analog? I mean, is it like throwing money into, I don't know, Nigeria? I mean, do, is it that risky, or do you think Russia's more in the orbit of Europe and there's generally a sense that one can have some expectations about the rule of law? about getting your money back hope, once right? you put it in. Uh, I, I think it's less like Nigeria and more like an, a European state. Uh, definitely, I mean, Russia is 145 million people. It reigns the 10th largest population in the world. And much like Americans, I never discount the Russians. I mean, Russians are very proud people. I spoke to a very senior contact in, in Moscow this morning, and they're somewhat misunderstood. And Russians will always put the country first, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why Putin still has a tremendous amount of, uh, tremendous amount of following. It's about 80% approval right now in Russia itself. So. Um, that coupled with uh, multinational companies that are looking to either take a stance, I think they have to be decisive and if they want to stay in the country and continue on for the next 20 years because of whether you look at the 1998 uh, debt crisis or 2008, it can make for very volatile times in Russia, but usually after a boom, or sorry, a bust, there's very an in, very interesting boom that has followed. And so maybe this is the same type of situation. Mm -hmm. um, but there are large companies as well that have pulled out. I mean, G, uh, GM, uh, you know, car sales in Russia were down 36%, I believe, in 2015, and they made a choice to, to withdraw from, from the country. But to your earlier question, I think definitely it is more, um, uh, more like an EU state than a truly emerging, emerging country, for sure. What do you think the ethics of investing in Russia Russia are. I mean, again, there is a debate. You can have two views of Putin. You can have two views of should we engage Russia. We're stock talking with Stephen Cohen, the uh, renowned U.S. academic this hour, about you know whether now's the time to end what he describes as a kind of phony Cold War. Gary Kasparov says, look, it's time to double down. We need to squeeze Putin even harder. I think it's a very interesting point. I mean, the, when investing in Russia, there's an old saying that says, uh, you know, buy the first bottom and you'll get the second bottom for free. Um, <laughs> and, and you have to be very careful, careful for sure. Um, all we know is that we, we don't know with Putin. And so uh, he changed the laws and the Constitution to be reelected and, you know, have a six-year term in 2012, and that election will come up in 2018, where there's some very interesting dates that are, that are coming forward uh, that surround Russia. The first is April 17th next week with regards to OPEC and their decision of what they're going to do, whether that's OPEC member, members or non-members. Um, and then beyond that, you have the Duma election, uh, which is the Legislative Assembly um, in September 2016, which was advanced from December mm -hmm. uh, in Russia. And that's a 450-seat uh, Legislative Assembly in Russia that basically is the power of Russia to, to, to mold, mold uh, legislation going forward. So uh, it is an interesting time. Um, people are, are, are certainly sort of polarized. They're, they're either, mm -hmm. yes, it's time to go all in, or no, it's, as usual, politically too unstable to, yeah. unstable to make a decision. When you look at Russia, I mean, is it just, does investing in your decision-making just correlate exactly with the price of oil? In, in, like, in, in a way, let's say that Canada is a bit more diversified. Uh, you might even look at a country, some, some big African, Middle Eastern producers. I mean, Russia seems just to be hardwired to that oil price. I think it definitely is, but uh, it, it still makes for, for an interesting time. Um, 
speaking with my contact in Moscow, I think the, the adage sort of comes from sports. I mean, the best offense is a good defense. It may, might not be the time to, to invest directly in Russian companies, right. but it might be a very interesting time to look at major companies like Kinross, which has 10, 25% of their mines in Russia, mm. um, British American Tobacco, that has been doing very, very well there, um, Imbev with, with the sale of Budweiser. They produce in Russia. Um, they had sales of 30% growth in Russia because mm. Russians still like a luxury product, which they can s consider Budweiser to be one. Um, but. Yes, it is very much coupled with oil, and, and we need to look at where oil is going in the next few years and make that decision. Are you all in with a Russian company, or do you sort of um, play the more temperate uh, investment thesis, which is maybe investing in a company that has the ability to pull out of Russia if, if troubles occurred right. um, and isn't linked to a, a state-owned entity? Yeah, and you're right, because if we look at the run-up in the Moscow stock market, it's often cons uh, consumer companies, durables. It hasn't really been in the energy sector that they've seen a pop. And it hasn't. I mean, Gazprom at its peak was $350 billion of market cap, uh, but Putin has been known to use uh, Gazprom as, as uh, a device in sort of his political dealings. First, they were asked to support and sponsor the Sochi Games. Um, they recently took over two, me two or three media companies in Russia and sort of deviated a little bit from their platform. So uh, we're not sure who's driving the bus in, in that sort of investment. So I would say buyer beware with regards to direct Russian, Russian investments, but I, I really believe that second sort of tier uh, ability to have access to the country with a major multinational mm. rule of law governed maybe in the U.S. or in the U.K. Right, right, right. is a good way to play it. Well, Robert, great insights. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Uh, you clearly know this file, and we appreciated uh, your time today. Thank you very much. Great. That was uh, Robert Jansen. He's the chief investment officer at uh, Westcourt Capital. As I usually do at the end of the show, let me give you my quick take on Russia. I mean, I think this is an agonizing decision for